Mate, thank you very much. Let's make it a little bit official. Thank you very much for taking the time this afternoon. Um, you know, just some context behind this game. So, James Madison, where were they sitting in the league at the time when you played them? Uh, they're at top with just just a one loss in conference. Okay, and uh, you guys got the win, right? Yeah, we won by six and gave them their second loss of the season. And, you're... and from Brit, I'll just give you another context. Is um, so they were at the top and they were just the you know the champions by themselves a regular season, but with with us beating them, we stayed at the sixth position. We managed to, you know, not have to play four games in a row. We only have to play three now in tournament. And they are now the co-champions with Northeastern. So that's a little bit more concept behind it. So obviously a pressure game then, you know, in terms yeah. of expectation, which is really important because, you know, especially from, a, you know, an, an offensive standpoint, you know, pressure situations, you know, sometimes guys can tighten up or they can come in loose. And, you know, I think one of the things and some of the feedback that I hope that you'd be able to give to some of the guys that are watching this is, you know, your mindset walking into these games, um, especially the games that are high pressure. Like, how how do you feel? How do you prepare? Like, what what is the key for you? Um, obviously, I do feel, you know, there is pressure and I do feel, you know, nervous going into the game. But to be honest, as soon as, you know, when I get on the court, it kind of, the you know, ball goes up, it kind of just all goes away. And, you know, we I practiced for this like the whole year, so I know that we have been in situations before, so I kind of know how to deal with it. And you know, I just you know just get my game off how I usually do. And then, like a, a you know, a feature of your game is obviously the perimeter play and your ability to shoot the three. So, in terms of going into this game and making sure that you're warm at the right times, um, you know, you've been a regular starter. Is there something that you put into your warm up, for instance? that you know is is game like that is specific to to what you do within the game is there something that you could recommend you know in terms of uh in terms of deliberate practice that you do to to prep yourself um so for us our warm-up normally consists of we we get split into i think it's i think it starts an hour before uh, tip off we get split into three groups and um, with the coaches so we get the, the bigs in one group the wings and then you know the one two guards in another group and then uh we each get with the with the coach and we each get uh, around 10 minutes to just um do our do our own stuff and have some set stuff that you know what would uh, situations that would happen in the in the game awesome and so i, well, I don't like to take loads of time so i want to, I want to get into mm-hmm. these shots so this game you go uh five for five from three um, yeah. you know, and that's kind of what we're really going to like break down a little bit now. We're just going to go into the shots, just go into um, some of the concept on spacing, possibly some of the terminology that you would use or that your coaching staff use with you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's lots of different reads. There's lots of different stuff that you can take out of this. So clip one, um, just going to just gonna run it. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll run it back after. Mm-hmm. So ball advanced. See you located in the corner. Yeah. So here, there was a play, uh, play call, certain play call for uh, Cam Winner to get the ball and for him to drive to his right hand, as you can see, Omari gone away. And the main point was this, is just uh, the coach wanted me on that uh, weak side uh, corner. And then obviously Cam going to the right, we get three cutters going away from the ball and then we get Cam going to his strong hand. And then uh, this team, we knew that was they really liked to pressure, like they were unorganized pressure, and they really liked to suck in on the drive. So I knew, I knew exactly if you just like go like slowly a little bit. Uh, as soon as Cam gets the uh, Cam gets the ball cut, I kind of wipe my hands there, kind of a thing, because I already knew what was going to happen, and I was just getting myself prepared because okay. I knew my I could already see my guy like nearly one feet into the key, and he hasn't even drove yet. So I knew he was going to suck in, and they'll just you know give me that little time that I need to get my shot off. Okay, so that's, that's some, some great points there. Like, you know, the one thing here is, you know, for guys that are watching this, reading the offense and, uh, and understanding kind of what the, the reaction is going to be from the action. So here, being proactive, you said about, you yeah. know, wiping your hands down, getting your hands ready. You can see that your stop yeah. drop your stance. You know, you're getting your, uh, your hand into your shooting's pocket. You know, you, you know where the ball's going to be. Yeah. Doing. And also, you, you talked about the, the cuts. So here, you know, you're starting with more of a traditional four out one inset. Stretch, mm-hmm. you know, you're stretching the corners out with with uh, obviously yourself. And this is Cam Winter right here. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as we get it, the cuts come. So as an yeah. offensive player now, reading 
uh, the reader the yeah. cut. The third cut. And you can see he's already look on a Mario's cut. A Mario did this. This was pointed out in the film the the following day. A Mario did a great cut here to even suck in my guy even more. He comes two feet in the paint. And yeah. then as soon as I, as soon as I saw that and Cam started to drive, I knew the guy would stay there and had enough time to just take a shot. Perfect. And then you look wide open yeah. three. Yeah. And one one point of note here is how little you move, but how much you do with yeah. your movement. So it's not that you're disengaged from the offense. You know exactly what's going to happen. You know that that ball is going to come to you. And actually, the importance of you within this possession is stretching the floor. Right. Yeah. We yeah. The coaches always emphasize. Maybe to be honest, if we were really looking at it creatively with the with my coaching staff, would they say to go even more corner? Like yeah, even, just even more space in. But I knew with the and the coaches knew with the such like, high pressure, they're gonna like suck in really quickly and just give me a lot of time to get on shot. For sure. And maybe the the other thing you know in terms of um, you know in this situation, especially guys that are you know, that, that would watch this, this back is the possibility that you could break the line here a little bit, you know, that you yeah. could either step yeah. up or step down um, yeah. just to stop this defender getting his hands in the, in the passing lane there. Maybe just the one thing again, but we're yeah. going to see that a little bit later on in some of the other clips. So a really good clip. Um, you, know, I, you know, I really like that. It's a really good commentary from you, Mate. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just run it through. And, um, so... Mm -hmm. Okay, so this was uh, another uh, uh, play call. Uh, you know, so you come at the end of the half, we need to um, get some time off the clock and just see how, give the cam the ball. But on, yeah, this was a new play that we got given, like put in literally, I think the week that we're preparing for this. It was called strong two. And then, so it's basically just, I get a chip from, I go to the, the weak side there and then uh, I get a chip screen from the big guy and then we just literally run a ghost ghost screen okay so I just luckily <laughs> here the guy um uh you know he, ch he ch JB chipped me really well and the guy managed to you know trip over his own team player so it kind of did help me a little bit so, um, so you, what 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 do you call this this screen here uh, uh that's just a chip screen just chip. okay so you, so that's some new terminology you said chip screen. Yeah. So we just chip, just chip, he just chips my guy. So it's not even really a proper screen. He just kind of brushes him off, you know, yeah. gets some contact, and right. it did work. He did end up falling over. So I, I would call that like like a rub screen, but I actually like your yeah, yeah. analogy yeah. there. Like, I actually thought you said a trip screen, which would oh, have no. been like, which would have been like yeah. a, the right the right call it because you get yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> chip. Yeah. So you yeah, got it's a chip. You got this chip screen, you know, or yeah. rub screen into the yeah, yeah. You ghost this one. Ghost this, yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing I, on this, if I was trying to change it and do this play over again, one thing I would do is that really emphasizes like, like, ring my hands up and really say that I'm coming to screen him so that maybe confuses both the defenders and then gets me a wide open yeah. um, shot boy. I mean, it still worked out in the end. And, and one like uh, key factor of this again is, you know, and this is a not necessarily you on ball. But one thing that creates you this space is that your teammates are still spreading in corners. Yeah. So this spread and this baseline here, this, you know, the way in which your teammates are lined up is going to free up this, this part of the court to give you that opportunity to flare back out and receive the ball. Yeah. So yeah. here, obviously, you ghost it or you, you, know, you ghost it straight out and you, know, you get the pass on the kickback straight away. So now mm -hmm. the defensive players really have to make a decision because no matter yeah. how you look at it, you know, these guys, and then, yeah. even an extra is wide open, right? An extra pass is wide open if my, both them guys come out and then we still got a pretty good, decent shooter in the corner, so. Absolutely. So the footwork here, it's quite difficult. Footwork. Back foot. What's yeah. Your, uh, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, for, for me on this one, the important thing is that I like to, when I'm doing a flare, I like to get my outside foot planted. So it's my left foot planted here. So before I catch the ball, so it puts me kind of straight up and on balance. And then when I take my shot, I'm not leaning outwards, you know, doing a fadeaway shot. Okay, there's the plant. And then, and then plays the plant up there. And then I just my right foot's forward. And then, yeah, it's just a straight shot. Awesome. Okay. And again, like, you know, in terms of generating that power, you know, you're quite deep there. 
Um, mm -hmm. you know, where, where would you say that a lot of your power is coming from in this shot? Um, it's definitely, it's definitely the, the lower body, but I also think um, you know, the core strength is really important in this one too, you know, to stay on balance. Because if you're on balance, you're obviously not going to get as much power out of your shot. And if you're balanced, you're going to get way more power. Nothing but net here. And what I really like about this, and obviously the wider context, is like how automatic this shot is for you in this game. Yeah. Now, is yeah. this an action that you would practice potentially in your warm-ups? Um, we do, yes. Uh, it's, it changes every game. It depends on, um, you know, what kind of play we like focus on running. We, we knew that we were going to run this play. So um, I did get quite a lot of reps before the game and, you know, I knew what was coming. So. So both situations are obviously the, the two that we've looked at so far, catch and shoot. Um, but yep. one you've got from the almost static position, this more from, you know, much more dynamic movement in terms of ghosting away, flaring, yep. catching uh, off, you know, planting your, your off foot and then taking the power off your off foot into your shot. So two mm -hmm. really different kinds of shots. And that's what I really like about the five threes that you made in this game is, there's, you know, there's a lot of difference in, in how they look. So yep. really good. And I enjoyed that one. But again, this this was another another like set called uh, we call this a uh, wide flip two. So the basic aim is the we there's a wide screen. We call this a wide screen when a five sets a little screen for the four to come across the number one. Yep, wide screen, and then it's kind of like a handoff back to the back to the one, and then as soon as Cam enters it to the eye post there, and then double uh, stagger. And then the aim for this play is because they were really uh, over overplaying uh, Cam. So the aim of this was me to put a curl right into Cam's guy. And then with this kind of curl here, yeah, I managed to get Cam open. And then I also screen my guy. He, he kind of, you know, gets off balance. And then they suck into the big guy and then gives me a okay. wide open really, flare again. Really good again. Like, you know, uh, obviously... Um, Coach Spiker is a bit of an offensive guru as well. So, you know, he's got all those yep. offenses on lock. But here, like, there's so much going on within this, within this action, within this set. Um, mm -hmm. you know, number one, like, you're going back with that initial spacing deal. So, again, yep. this is, you know, I'm talking about wing play, for instance. You've made the effort to get down into the corner. Again, like, coming back to, to people that might be watching this, the importance of this corner spacing is that you give space for these guys here to play into. And yep. at some point, you know, these two might have to pinch, which opens up, uh, you know, you guys in the corner. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here, the stagger away. So hitting the screens, you know, what is the importance of that from a, from a shooting perspective? Um, really, um, you just need to... So when I'm... We do practice this, and when I do practice it, you, you need to, like, practice it going over with speed. Because the only only way you can beat your man and get him uh, locked onto the screen is if you beat it with speed, and then you can see that. Do my best to try try go shoulder to shoulder uh, with the screens, and then that gives me a little bit of time. And now my guy's trailing me, and then I put my hands up so it doesn't show as a foul, and I'm able to get my point guard open. Great. And then, that's that's one point of thing when if you are if you're doing a play and you're curling into a thing, you make sure that the ref can't really call, put your hands up so they can't call anything, and then they basically screen each other. So a couple of things that you know, I really like about this is, number one, you're, because you're a shooter, you're guarded hip to hip, so you yeah. have to be defended throughout the possession. So again, this comes back to guys that might pick this up and watch it. If you don't need to be guarded within this possession, say, for instance, mm -hmm. you're not a perimeter threat, you know, how are you going to engage the defensive player? How are you going to make them defend you for the whole, throughout the whole sequence? Because without you being defended, you're not in this position here where you get to, you know, fix up on two of them. So this yep. almost this double screen action here, again, is really like that's a high IQ read because, you know, it's 1v2 and you're making the most of your size. And then the other thing, you know, and this is, you know, I don't know whether you pick this up from, uh, from a certain other coach that you might have had, but not fixing the screen, just being there. Like if you fix yep. it, it makes it a lot easier to get through. Whereas mm -hmm. here, you're just like in position, hands out, easy, easy, yeah. easy, making stuff yeah. happen, you know. And he could take, you know, he could take a dribble here and take yeah. a shot or you can whatever. Yeah. And what else I would add on the, um, on this, uh, when you're curling as a shooter, you, if, if the other team scouts you and they know you as a shooter, then they're going to be on your hip, like you said. 
and the reason was like you said it's not it's not good to sometimes fix your screen is because if you curl it and cam's guy doesn't stop me i'm going straight to the basket and jb's finding me on an easy layup and you're talking about uh, just this situation here not yeah just this situation yeah i'm being ready to take that dive I, to be honest, he didn't really stop me. Just looking at it back, I could have easily went, but I knew that what the, they wanted to, you know, get the shot clock going and get a good shot in this position. Yeah, awesome. And then just quickly again, like that change of speed here. Let's run it real time. That quick change of speed. Yeah. Obviously. And then. You, mm -hmm. you, yeah. you said and then yeah, the, the sucking again. Like I said, the, we knew that they were going to pressure, and they sucked in on the big guy rolling, and then that's, that's wide open shot. And then the catch again, planting that back foot. And as you can see there, the consistency of the shot is the yep. catch. Planting offside. Yep. And then putting it up. Every shot's the same as well. Yeah. Awesome. So three really different shots or three really different makes. Yeah. And when you just, I'll just add, you know, how I say I plant on my outside foot is just because you don't want to. The shoe you don't really want it unless you're a really really good shooter in the NBA you don't really want to take a fade away on like a flare screen so that planting the outside foot just really you know gets you centered and on balance awesome defensive rebound and he'll drop it off winner comes out of the back with it to the right side got to put a man okay so tra transition three so again very different to the, the shots that we've seen before and again you're really demonstrating your repertoire um, the, the one of the key things that you know I would like you to just kind of talk about is receiving the ball over your shoulder, you know, and that the importance of that is you're not receiving the ball as in a straight line drive. It's coming over your shoulder. You're facing, you know, almost away from the basket on the uh, when it is passed, and you know, just your footwork leading into the to this, and also, you know, your confidence in taking this shot. So yeah, talk yeah. to me about this one. Um, so. This this fast break fast break transition free me and Cam this we've we've done that even last year there was multiple times that this happened in practice so we kind of we kind of know where he knows when to find me and we kind of like know each other when you know I'm going to be open and I don't know why they didn't pick me up or left me wide open like that um, but yeah we've practiced it so many times that you know it was, I was just really confident and I knew that you know it was going in before I released it and obviously I hit like three in a row before this so you know the confidence was just really high sorry. and with with the foot sorry it's just with the footwork um it's just i was i already knew before i even um uh caught the ball that it's just going to be a you know the normal left right and then just shoot it so just so like here so like here as yeah. soon as he if you go a little bit more as soon as he right before here like keep going keep going and then here i already have my left foot like already starting to yeah, yeah. And I know I'm going to plant my left foot. So as so, soon as I catch it here, and the left foot's got it down. So left foot. Okay. Yeah. So just left, right. key, so just key things just to summarise is practicing that action with someone that you know is going to be delivering that ball to you. So yeah. grabbing the point guard, you know, saying, "Hey, can we work on this pass over his shoulder?" You know, repping this, and that's something that you do. You've done a lot with with Cam. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, like having, like I said, that the confidence to be able to pull that. And, you know, also, you know, you said about not too sure why you weren't guarded out in transition. We can maybe look at that from a, from a rebounding standpoint. As you can see here, the, you know, the yeah. inside of the court is loaded up. So, yep. you know, really it's going to be difficult for them to actually get across. Just poor communication in transition. But also as well, you have this 3v2 on the strong mm -hmm. side. So, you know, this guy here has to make a decision. If he does yeah. jump out, Potentially, you could move it on. This guy would probably get there, but mm -hmm. you know, you are feeling it. That confidence, yeah. um, you know, yeah. look at the elevation in your shot as well. You know, really rising up into that shot. You know, it's a it's a great mate. And whilst yeah. we're just uh, going through, I just want to get a shout out. This is Coach Jordan, right? Yeah, uh, Coach Jordan. That's Coach Jordan. Yeah. Okay. So he's uh, he's. So he yeah, I work, um, so we have like a little workout group that we um, we normally work out. So if we have, I think we have practice at nine fifteen in the morning. I normally go up and work out with him at eight, start eight thirty. So forty five minutes before practice, we normally get um, a good good amount of working, you know, shooting off the dribble, everything else. So uh, me and him, we kind of got a strong bond this year, and then you know, yeah, he's just celebrating for me. He is celebrating. I also like the fact that your the guys up here know that, that yeah. they know that that's gone in. Yeah, 
before it's got in. So, you know, yeah. like just again, um, you know, something that our guys can definitely look at is, you know, the bench reaction there. You know, you've got one, yeah. I don't um, is that O'Driscoll, I think, maybe there. He's the only guy. Uh, Jenny, JJ, yeah, JJ. And, and he's definitely writing it down on the stats. So Yeah, no, because we, um, we do, we've got like a shot chart. It's like, I think it's like one to five, five being the best shot we could get. So he normally tracks them and see what percentage we were shooting. So it's like, if I was probably like a five. I think that was a good shot. So it was probably like a five. So he's just writing the five down so we get that good percentage. And that confidence, you know, like your confidence is going to be uh, sky high when your teammates yeah. uh, support you like that. So yeah, Especially during, you know, this whole crazy pandemic with no one in the gym, you know, it's really important for the bench to get involved and, you know, give that energy for us. Awesome. Right, she'll move it into the to the last clip. Okay, and so clip clip five. I'll just um you know just run it through. So this is oh, yeah, we're in that. So so this just to give it again you know some uh, context to the moment is five minutes left in the second half. So obviously you know those that know will know that the college ball, ball is played in two halves. So seventy. 67. So this is a huge possession here. Mm -hmm. It really is a big possession. Okay. Yeah. So talk to me from kind of this position here. Um, yeah. So I mean, like straight away, like I was already as soon as JB, as soon as JB called the ball, I was already like getting ready because you, you can kick it out from there. Because my guy was looked two feet in the paint again. But it's okay. So I was just getting ready for, you know, any pass that was coming because I knew JB could just literally fire at any moment. So I was just getting ready for that. And then I could have clocked up, like you said earlier. And then as soon as I realized that he picked up the ball, then I clocked up and then my guy was way too in the paint. And then it just, again, gives me enough time to just get my shot off, you know, with the quick release. So just a quick one here. You can see, like, here... Again, I'm wiping my hands again, you know, just, just hands. being prepared. Yeah, really key thing though, prepping your hands down in stance. You know, the, the pickup is probably the trigger for you to get moving. He <laughs> makes the pump fake, so obviously, you know, he's rejecting this cut down the middle. Yeah. Just that little bit of patience, just a little bit of movement takes you up the lane. Okay, yeah. yeah and then, then go on. Yeah. And then I'll just say... Um, a little key thing and why I move them for like shooters and like on the weak side. If you can see my guy, he has, he has no clue where I am uh, yeah. until now. Until on the pass out, he has no clue. So the key on that is the key on that read is what? Like what are you what are you playing here? So um, you're in the lane. How are you? Yeah. How are you reading that? Uh, obviously, you see your you see your offensive um, your offensive player what he's doing, and then reading your defensive player. See right there, his eyes looks to JB. Just that one little second that he doesn't know where I am just gives me that extra space. So a really you know a, a coaching point there is on the head turn, and I don't know whether you yeah. do it by default or by design, but when you're playing in these situations, whether it's making an off ball back cut, maybe you're mm -hmm. defended in this situation up top, is when the head turns. That's a great opportunity for you to... Like right, right there. As soon as he turns, yeah. he goes, turns his head and then he doesn't know. Yeah, perfect. And it gives me extra time. Great. And again, like, you know, the, the little shimmy on your feet as well. Same foot placement, you know, still looking for that left leg to be planted, mm -hmm. to generate your power into your shot. You know, and at that point, you're feeling very good. So you leave the... Hot, held the follow-through, yeah. You held that follow-through. You know, it's yeah. a huge spot in the moment of the game as well. And obviously, your, yeah. you know, your, your teammates are supporting you massively. So, you know, really, is that, I mean, is there anything else that you wanted to, to add on that before we wrap up? Um, I think that's, yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, everything. Awesome. Well, Mate, um, you know, I really appreciate your time. And, you know, it's, it's great to have that. And it's, um, you know, just to have those five clips, you know, is really good. Like, such a variety with the mm -hmm. same outcome, but such a variety of, of, of you know of ways in which to to find space and patience and timing and you know it's, it's it's great to see and I think there's a lot of stuff there that younger players and older players um, can learn from. So you know I want to really thank you for your time, Mate. Um, yeah, no problem. Awesome.